Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer are set to go head to head, face to face through a number of debates in this election campaign. The first did get testy along the way. The NHS is still recovering from COVID. We went through the best part of two years where the NHS couldn't conduct all the treatments it normally would. And it is going to take time to recover from that. But we are now making progress. The waiting lists are coming down. But what Keir Starmer Hang didn't on. mention to you, which you did, Julie. Wait, you, you, 7.2 million, they're now 7.5 million. Now 7 million. He says they're coming down, and this and, is the guy who says he's good at maths. Yeah, they are, they are now coming down. <laughs> they are now coming down. 7.2 yes. when you said you'd get them down. 7.2 million, they're now 7.5 million. I'd like you to explain how they're coming down. Because they were coming down from where they were when they were higher. 7.2. And they're now <laughs> on their way down. <laughs> they are down. The data group Savanta conducted a poll straight after the debate to see how the two leaders had fared and... Rishi Sunak, it emerged, had done reasonably well under the circumstances he is in, helped no doubt by a less than spectacular performance from Keir Starmer. But could Rishi Sunak catch up in the opinion polls in days ahead and then, who knows, in the actual poll? I think that's less likely, to be honest. I think what we're really seeing is that, yes, in, an, in isolation of, of a televised debate, you know, viewers didn't mind what they saw from Rishi Sunak. But I think ultimately, the public has made up their mind already on him. You know, he has an incredibly low favourability rating. He's trailed Keir Starmer in our best PM metric for a long time, since May 2023. I think Keir Starmer's current lead over Rishi Sunak is larger than it's ever been. And I think there, there's very little that we've seen in this campaign so far that would make much difference to that. And I think at this stage, the, 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 you know, the, the, the wider populace, the electorate at large, is really looking for change. And Rishi Sunak doesn't represent that in any way, shape or form. Sunak gambled in announcing that snap election when he did. Earlier today, I spoke with His Majesty the King to request the dissolution of Parliament. The King has granted this request and we will have a general election on the 4th of July. Rishi Sunak plunged into election campaigning straight after that announcement at Downing Street. He headed straight to his first campaign meeting that same afternoon. He's been on a roll ever since. Visits, meetings, tours, announcements, but has that done anything to shift the opinion polls in his favour? Not at all, really. And if anything, I think they've gone the other way. Um, you know, I think that there was, before the election was called, I think there was a common belief that the polls would start to narrow. Labour have enjoyed a sort of 18 to 20 point poll lead for quite a long time. They've been very static. And throughout this campaign, they've continued to be pretty static. Rishi Sunak's one repeat boast through his campaign is his record as Chancellor of the Exchequer, in particular the furlough scheme under which the government paid people to sit at home to give them some spending power and to keep some liquidity in the market through the epidemic. But that was no particular brainchild of his. Just about every finance minister of every developed country launched an almost exactly similar scheme. Rishi Sunak's unique contribution was less convincing. It was the eat out to help out scheme, as he called it, under which the government paid more than a billion pounds to restaurants to encourage diners to come at subsidised rates. The idea was to help the catering business and to press home his idea. Rishi Surak himself took to waiting at a restaurant to illustrate how convinced he was of this particular venture of his. But that invitation, that inducement turned out to be a leading factor in the relapse of the epidemic. As Chris Whitty, then the chief medical officer, said, it turned out to be a scheme to eat out to help out the virus. In any case, that furlough scheme now is long forgotten, is too far back down in memory to be a current and convincing boast. Rishi Sunak's uh, broad kind of journey over the last five years has been he was a popular chancellor throughout the pandemic, obviously with a lot of his, a lot of his, uh, his financial schemes to help uh, British people through the, through the pandemic. But that has really ebbed away. He wasn't particularly popular towards the end of Boris Johnson's premiership. It seemed as though he was responsible for stabbing Boris Johnson in the back, which, you know, although the Boris Johnson wasn't very popular at that time, Rishi Sunak didn't cover himself in glory. He had a bit of a rebound when he was out of the news because Liz, Liz Truss took all of the attention. But ever since then, you know, it's been a, a downward trajectory for Rishi Sunak. And I think at the minute, he, you know, his, his fav net favourability rating isn't quite as bad as Liz Truss's, but is as bad, I think, as Boris Johnson's was towards the end of his premiership. So just what is it about Rishi Sunak that people are saying through these polls that they do not like about him, that they find unconvincing in him? 
And I think that they've seen a, a lot of inaction and not a lot of delivery from him. I think, again, throughout the course of the last four or five years, you know, it was Boris Johnson and Liz Truss that were responsible for Conservative voters switching to the Labour Party. It's really been Rishi Sunak responsible for Conservative voters switching to Reform UK, mostly on immigration and a lack of action on small boat crossings. I think if you make immigration the centrepiece of your campaign and then your, your flagship policy doesn't literally and figuratively get off the ground, then you're hiding to nothing and you've made a rod for your own back. And I think that that really is, is the fundamental um, characteristic of Rishi Sunak's premiership. Voters do not believe that he's delivered on any of his promises. There's been a series of inaction, a lot of talk, and frankly, at this point, they don't trust him enough to vote for him to, to, to be Prime Minister for the next five years. And therefore, the change message that Keir Starmer is bringing comparatively is just much more powerful and much more likely to be believed by voters. On the other side, Labour leader Keir Starmer is not exactly Mr. Popular either. Is this turning out to be a contest to pick the one less unconvincing? He is ultimately the alternative to Rishi Sunak. I think when voters are given the choice between the two, whether that's the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, or the two men, there might be ambivalence towards Labour and Starmer, but there is dislike and distrust of the Conservative Party and Rishi Sunak, and therefore ambivalence wins out. And I think that's one of the reasons why this, you know, this general election feels at this stage like a foregone conclusion. It's not to do with the public liking or loving Keir Starmer and the Labour Party, but they do not have any strong negative feelings towards them like they do the Conservatives and Sunak. For more news and updates, all you need to do is follow CNBC TV 18 on all of our digital platforms.